I will always rectify and say that I am not a mediator of the Akawas. Not at all. I am not mandated by any Akawas body. Is Senegal's recently elected president Basaru Diomaye Faye opposed to Pan-Africanism? This is the narrative being pushed by Western sources, but reality diverges significantly from this portrayal. Faye has recently stated his reluctance to withdraw from ECOWAS in favor of AES, leading to the misconception that he is unsupportive of Pan-Africanism. However, the truth is quite the opposite. He is more inclined to foster African unity than many other leaders. So why did he decline the proposition of AES? Let's find out. In a recent address that has captured the world's attention, Senegal's newly elected president, Basaro Diomaye Faye, delivered a speech in Burkina Faso that has sent shockwaves across Africa and the Western world. This speech, primarily focused on the AES alliance of Sahel states, clarified Senegal's position regarding the alliance and highlighted Faye's firm stance on Pan-Africanism. His cautious approach towards the AES has been a subject of considerable discussion and analysis, reflecting broader themes of African unity and regional integration. What caught everyone's attention was him saying he was not a mediator of AES. So, what does this signal? A departure from Pan-Africanism? President Faye's speech in Burkina Faso marked a significant moment for Pan-Africanism. Known for his left-wing Pan-Africanist ideology, Faye was warmly welcomed by President Ibrahim Traoré and the people of Burkina Faso. His election represents a pivotal shift towards anti-imperialist sentiments in Africa, signaling a new era of political leadership committed to reclaiming sovereignty and fostering regional unity. This movement is seen as a rejection of neo-colonial influences and a step towards greater autonomy and self-determination for African nations. Faye's campaign was built on promises to enhance regional integration, tackle underdevelopment, and abandon the CFA franc, a currency controlled by France and viewed as a symbol of lingering colonialism. His stance resonated with many who seek a departure from historical economic dependencies and a move towards self-sufficiency. During his speech, Faye expressed profound gratitude for the unity and support from other African nations, particularly acknowledging Burkina Faso for sending a delegation to his inauguration. This gesture was more than a diplomatic formality. It was an example of the deep-seated bonds of solidarity that Faye seeks to cultivate across the continent. By thanking Burkina Faso, Faye underscored the importance of mutual support and cooperation among African countries. Faye's expressions of gratitude were accompanied by a clear vision of pan-African solidarity. He emphasized the shared heritage and common struggles that bind African nations, urging them to stand united against external pressures and work collaboratively towards common goals. His rhetoric was not just about celebrating past connections, but about forging a future where African nations are interdependent and supportive of each other's aspirations. The emphasis on unity aligns with Faye's broader vision of an Africa that stands together in the face of global challenges. His election is seen as a victory for those who believe in the power of collective action and regional cooperation. The focus on regional integration and sovereignty resonates with many who view these elements as crucial for Africa's progress and development. Faye's pan-Africanist stance is also a call to action. His vision of a united Africa involves practical steps towards greater economic and political integration. By advocating for policies that enhance trade, mobility, and collaboration, Faye is setting the stage for a continent that is economically robust and politically stable. His leadership promises a future where African nations can negotiate from a position of strength, both within the continent and on the global stage. President Faye's vision for Africa is rooted in the principles of increased commercial exchanges, better integration, and the seamless circulation of goods and people between countries. In his speech, he underscored the significance of mutual support and solidarity in overcoming the continent's challenges, praising the Burkinabe people's resilience during difficult times. This vision is a comprehensive blueprint for a united Africa focused on collective progress and shared prosperity. Faye's address in Burkina Faso outlined his aspirations for the continent in great detail. He emphasized the need for African countries to support each other through adversity, highlighting the Burkinabe people's strength and determination as a source of inspiration. 
This admiration was not mere flattery, it was a call for all African nations to recognize and celebrate their shared heritage and common struggles. Faye's words were a reminder of the power of unity and the potential that lies in collective action. The new president also talked about practical measures to achieve his vision. He proposed initiatives aimed at boosting trade and economic ties within Africa, suggesting that the future of the continent's prosperity lies in its ability to trade internally and reduce dependency on external partners. Faye suggests a strategic shift towards a self-sufficient Africa, where nations are interconnected through robust trade networks and mutual support systems. By advocating for increased circulation of goods and people, Faye envisions a continent where borders are more fluid, facilitating easier movement and exchange. This approach could significantly enhance economic growth, reduce poverty, and foster a sense of unity among African nations. His speech conveyed a message of hope and determination, urging African leaders to embrace a future of interconnectedness and shared success. Faye's vision for Africa's future also includes a strong emphasis on regional cooperation and integration. He believes that by working together, African nations can overcome common challenges such as poverty, unemployment, and political instability. His proposal for increased commercial exchanges and economic integration is designed to create a more resilient and self-reliant Africa capable of withstanding global economic pressures. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. The president's focus on the seamless circulation of goods and people is particularly significant. By promoting policies that facilitate trade and mobility, Faye aims to break down barriers that have historically hindered Africa's development. His vision is one where African nations are not just neighbors but partners, collaborating on a range of issues from economic development to security. Faye's commitment to mutual support and solidarity is also evident in his admiration for the Burkinabe people. By highlighting their resilience and strength, he is sending a powerful message to the rest of the continent that Africa's future lies in its ability to stand together and support one another. This message is a call to action for all African leaders to prioritize regional cooperation and to work towards a united and prosperous continent. But why are we talking about Pan-Africans when he is not a supporter of AES? Well, wait till you know the entire story. So, let's start with the AES question. Why not join? Despite his strong Pan-Africanist inclinations, President Faye made it clear that Senegal had no immediate plans to join the AES. He emphasized Senegal's current focus on internal reforms and reconciliation within the economic community of West African states ECOWAS. This decision reflects an optimistic belief in ECOWAS's potential to address regional issues effectively and underscores Faye's strategic approach to regional alliances. Faye reassured his audience that while Senegal is not joining AES for now, it remains committed to supporting Mali and other Sahel countries. He advocated for balanced diplomacy, favoring dialogue and regional cooperation, while remaining faithful to ECOWAS commitments. His stance indicates a cautious approach, prioritizing the assessment of ECOWAS's capabilities before making any shifts towards AES. The decision not to join AES has sparked debates and speculations. Critics argue that this move reflects a lack of commitment to Pan-Africanism. However, Faye's strategy appears to be one of prudence and careful evaluation. By focusing on strengthening ECOWAS, Faye aims to solidify existing regional frameworks before considering new alliances. This approach ensures that Senegal's decisions are grounded in thorough assessments and strategic planning. Faye's emphasis on ECOWAS also highlights his belief in the organization's potential to reform and address the region's challenges. He recognizes the importance of maintaining stability and continuity in regional alliances, suggesting that hasty decisions could undermine long-term goals. His visit to Mali, despite their rigid stance on AES, underscores his commitment to dialogue and cooperation, seeking common ground even with differing viewpoints. Faye's cautious stance on joining AES does not undermine his pan-Africanist credentials. Instead, it reflects a strategic decision to prioritize the consolidation and strengthening of existing regional structures. By focusing on ECOWAS, Faye is ensuring that Senegal remains committed to regional stability and cooperation, while also keeping the door open for future alliances. 
The emphasis on balanced diplomacy and regional cooperation is a testament to Faye's pragmatic approach to governance. He understands that regional integration cannot be rushed and that building strong, resilient alliances takes time. His commitment to evaluating ECOWAS's potential before making any decisions about AES is a clear indication of his strategic mindset. Faye's decision to prioritize ECOWAS also reflects a broader vision for Africa's future. By strengthening existing regional structures, he aims to create a more unified and cohesive continent, capable of addressing its challenges without excessive reliance on external actors. This approach is in line with his broader pan-Africanist ideals and his commitment to promoting African self-determination and autonomy. But what are critics saying about him? Critics argue that Faye's emphasis on ECOWAS is reminiscent of past puppet leaders, suggesting a betrayal of pan-Africanist ideals. However, these accusations appear to be unfounded. President Faye's approach seems to be rooted in a genuine desire to evaluate the potential of ECOWAS thoroughly before making any strategic decisions regarding AES. This does sound like propaganda, and who is doing that? The historical context cannot be ignored. Pan-Africanism has long been perceived as a threat by Western powers, given its promotion of African unity, self-determination, and resistance to Western imperialism. Prominent leaders like Patrice Lumumba and Kwame Nkrumah were vocal critics of Western influence, and their legacies continue to influence contemporary African politics. So, it seems like the West wants people to believe in the narrative that Faye hates Pan-Africanism for apparent reason. Faye's cautious approach to AES does not negate his commitment to Pan-Africanism. Instead, it reflects a strategic consideration of the best path forward for Senegal and the broader region. His decision to strengthen ECOWAS first suggests a methodical approach to regional integration, ensuring that any moves towards AES are well-founded and sustainable. But what action of his shows he wants Africa to unite? Despite not joining AES immediately, Faye's actions demonstrate his commitment to regional unity. His recent visits to Mali and Burkina Faso, both under military rule, signify efforts to strengthen ties and promote Pan-Africanism. These trips aim to bolster sub-regional integration and address security concerns, alongside improving negotiations with European nations on migration and economic issues. Faye's visits to these countries are more than diplomatic gestures, they are strategic moves to solidify regional bonds. By engaging with Mali and Burkina Faso, he is reinforcing the idea that African nations must stand together in the face of internal and external challenges. These visits underscore his belief in collective security and the importance of addressing regional issues through cooperation and mutual support. The discussions during these visits also highlight Faye's pragmatic approach to diplomacy. By improving negotiations with European countries, he seeks to create balanced partnerships that respect Africa's sovereignty and promote mutual benefits. This approach aligns with his broader vision of a self-sufficient and united Africa, capable of negotiating on equal terms with global powers. Faye's commitment to regional unity is also evident in his efforts to address security issues collaboratively. By working closely with Sahel countries, he aims to enhance collective security measures and ensure that regional challenges are met with coordinated responses. This strategy not only strengthens regional bonds but also promotes a stable and secure environment for economic growth and development. Faye's visits to Mali and Burkina Faso also serve to reaffirm Senegal's solidarity with these nations during their challenging times. His expressions of support for the resilience and combativeness of the Burkinabe people, for instance, are more than just words. They are a call to action for all African nations to stand together and support each other. The emphasis on sub-regional integration and collective security is a key aspect of Faye's vision for Africa. By promoting policies that enhance cooperation and mutual support, he aims to create a more unified and resilient continent. This approach is not just about addressing immediate challenges, but about laying the groundwork for long-term stability and prosperity. Faye's strategy also includes improving negotiations with European countries on key issues such as migration and economic agreements. By fostering balanced and respectful partnerships, he seeks to ensure that Africa's interests are represented and protected on the global stage. This approach is a clear departure from past policies that often placed African nations at a disadvantage in international negotiations. 
The commitment to regional unity is also reflected in Faye's efforts to strengthen ECOWAS. By focusing on internal reforms and reconciliation, he aims to create a more robust and effective regional organization. This approach ensures that Senegal and its neighbors can address their challenges collaboratively and from a position of strength. Faye's actions and rhetoric underscore his belief in the power of regional unity. His visits to Mali and Burkina Faso, his emphasis on strengthening ECOWAS, and his commitment to balanced diplomacy all point to a leader who understands the importance of cooperation and mutual support. His vision for a united Africa is not just about political rhetoric, but about practical steps towards a more integrated and self-reliant continent. Apart from this, what Faye is doing that proves he wants to promote Pan-Africanism even more. In addition to his diplomatic efforts and initiatives in education and youth empowerment, President Faye has undertaken several measures that further underscore his commitment to promoting Pan-Africanism and fostering a more united and independent Africa. President Fay has boldly taken a stance against imperialism, particularly in re-evaluating energy imports and reducing the influence of foreign powers like France. By reassessing energy dependencies and diminishing external influence, Fay aims to reassert African sovereignty and promote a more independent foreign policy. This move signifies a departure from historical patterns of economic exploitation and underscores his commitment to shaping Africa's destiny on its terms. Faye has pledged to renegotiate oil, gas, and mining contracts, a move aimed at increasing revenue and promoting economic development. By ensuring that these contracts are fair and equitable, Faye seeks to harness Africa's natural resources for the benefit of its people. Additionally, his government's focus on reducing corruption and improving governance will create a more transparent and accountable economic environment, conducive to sustainable growth and prosperity. Faye's government has adopted policies that actively promote African unity and cooperation. This includes initiatives to strengthen regional organizations, such as the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, and the African Union. By bolstering these institutions, Faye aims to create frameworks for collaboration and collective action, essential for addressing regional challenges and advancing common interests. This emphasis on unity reflects Faye's belief in the power of collective efforts to drive Africa's development and progress. In addition to his focus on education, Faye is spearheading efforts to revive and celebrate African culture and heritage. Through cultural festivals, art exhibitions, and other cultural initiatives, Faye aims to instill pride in African identity and promote a sense of unity among its diverse peoples. By reclaiming and celebrating Africa's rich cultural tapestry, Faye seeks to counteract the legacy of colonialism and foster a renewed sense of belonging and solidarity among Africans. President Faye is also a vocal advocate for fair trade practices that prioritize African interests. By championing fair trade agreements and advocating for equitable economic partnerships, Faye aims to ensure that Africa benefits fully from its engagement with the global economy. This approach is in line with his broader vision of economic empowerment and self-determination for African nations, positioning Africa as an equal partner on the world stage. So, in the end, does focusing more on ECOWAS mean becoming a Western puppet or a pan-African leader? Focusing more on ECOWAS doesn't inherently make one a puppet of the West or a true pan-African leader. It's essential to assess the context and motivations behind such a focus. In the case of President Fay, his emphasis on strengthening ECOWAS reflects a pragmatic approach to regional cooperation and integration. By prioritizing ECOWAS, Faye aims to consolidate existing regional frameworks and address pressing challenges within West Africa. This strategic decision is not about aligning with Western interests, but about fostering unity and stability within the region. ECOWAS serves as a platform for African nations to collaborate on issues ranging from economic development to security, offering a mechanism for collective action that aligns with Faye's pan-Africanist vision. Critics may argue that prioritizing ECOWES over joining AES signifies a lack of commitment to pan-Africanism. However, Faye's actions suggest otherwise. His cautious approach to joining AES demonstrates a commitment to evaluating regional alliances based on their effectiveness and alignment with African interests. This approach reflects a nuanced understanding of African geopolitics and a desire to pursue alliances 
that best serve the continent's long-term goals. Ultimately, focusing more on ECOWAS doesn't diminish Faye's stature as a pan-African leader. Rather, it underscores his commitment to pragmatic diplomacy and regional cooperation. By prioritizing ECOWAS, Faye is laying the groundwork for a more united and empowered Africa capable of addressing its challenges and shaping its destiny. As such, his leadership embodies the qualities of a true African statesman, navigating complex geopolitical realities while remaining steadfast in his commitment to African unity and self-determination. Do you think propaganda is being done? If yes, why so? What will the West get by doing this propaganda? Let us know in the comments section. Is this a sign for African nations to become united in this high time? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If so, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.